and stay home and not go to the church. I never went to Sunday school very much. Well, his influence on me was contrary to my interests, but he never opposed me. That is, he always said, why do you go to school so long and just turn out to be a dirty photographer? But at the same time, he made a very good dark room for me in the woodshed. Of course, in that day, one didn't have any light. But this was done in 1936, the one of Father in the Woodpup, when he was 90. I think it's really showing up the bad things of old age, if they're bad. But my father's photograph at 90, he was as good looking as he'd ever been. And I think that's the way to quit. And that's what I took on Stieglitz. Well, he was in, in 291, his gallery on New York City. This is my preferred one of him. I did seven. They are all fairly like him, but this is the one I like the best because of that little cynical look in the eye. You see, I went to New York without a camera. And uh, I had my holders, though, my 8 by 10 holders with me so that I could load them and go to his place and ask him if I could use his camera because I knew he had one. And he said, certainly. And it had an old Gertz Dagar on it with a shutter so corroded you couldn't read the openings. And it was released by a bulb which I was not accustomed to. And I had no meter in 1934. No meter, just holding the bulb and as long as I thought he'd last. And everyone came out right. I sell that all the time, of course. Somebody always wants it. To be popular today, one should stick strictly to agony in the streets. <laughs> Don't you think so? People that are busted in some way or other. You know, lately at a party, I, I met a man who thought he was going to give me a great compliment. And he said, oh, I saw a photograph of yours that I think is just wonderful. And I said, would well, describe it. And he said, well, it was a man with one leg and a, a crutch leaning against a telephone pole. And I said, Dorothea Lang. I never photographed one-legged man in my life, so I'm out of that. <laughs> I am funny. Well, you know, I think it's all right for Dorothea to have photographed it, but it doesn't appeal to me. You know, Dorothea was teaching, and she uh, gave her class an assignment to photograph their environment without anyone in it. And one morning I got up, and that was the way my bed looked, and I threw my hairpins in it, and I thought, this is for Dorothea. I don't hunt for anything. So I don't hunt for things. I just wait until something strikes me. Of course, I, I hunt for an expression when I'm trying to photograph people. That was pure accident when I did her, 1950. And what I was attracted by was the sunbonnet. Don't you think the sunbonnet's unusual in San Francisco? <laughs> and, uh, and I never saw her again. You know, sometimes I think that one photograph like that indicates more about the feelings of people than just a lot of things. Now, you know that woman is not happy and, and she doesn't have all of her wants, I'm sure was in a restaurant in, in Warsaw. And this is on a German train. Now that's a different type of a person. You see, she has what she needs. I don't have a feeling that she was rich at all, but she was able and she was quite old to be traveling alone, I would think so. And this was a girl I went to Chartres with from Paris. And in the restaurant, 
I said to her, I'm going to go outside and see what's happening. And when I went outside, I saw what was happening inside and took it. I think that's sort of nice of her. I never heard from her. I have a feeling that she jumped off the bridge. I, I'm not, uh, I'm still sticking with people more than things, and I don't walk around the city as much as I did. Uh, I don't know why. Telephone, all the other agonies of life keep you from doing what you really think you should do. But I don't like landscape. I'm, I, I never have had the time to run out when the weather's right. You know, always I would be getting dinner for somebody uh, when it was uh, sunset time when you really can do a nice landscape or crack of dawn. I'm not there. So I, I very seldom have done anything that could be called a landscape, but I do things in a landscape. I do people portraits because people pay me for it and I still have to live. I feel as if people who continue to be uh, Artists in any field, when they don't have to earn a living, have even a harder uh, road to hold on people who earn their living. That is, if people don't take the living business too seriously, work yourself to death commercially or something like that, or doing something that prohibits you doing anything you really want to do. But uh, I, I've always been sort of glad of a certain amount of poverty. I enjoy it. All I want to do is to live. You know, whenever I photographed anybody who does anything with his hands, I usually come down and focus on it and do the hand. And today I had the most astonishing visitor, at least for me it was, because um, he saw my photograph of Robert Irwin's hands reading Braille in my book. And he really bought it from that, from seeing it. He had in mind to buy it for his office. He's a surgeon of hands. So he came over here today to see it. So he saw a lot of things that he liked. And he took one of uh, Roy's hands on the press, which is arms and hands. The other day, I decided to do something on hands, so I put these all together. I never put them together before, and I really like them. I did that all over the place, and I think that's amusing. Nobody ever liked it, but still I like it. And this hand, it's a double. But this one I found on a fence of a place that they wouldn't let us in. And these two legs are my doll I put in there. Well, that is two negatives also. Same time, same day. Same time, same place. Well, I call it what it means to me. I think dreamwalking is a very good title for it. Well, this is a well-known person, Merce Cunningham. I, I left the camera open, and this is he on the same negative across the room and then near me. I clicked it off when I thought it had happened. I, I love Broughton. Well, that was also a bit of luck. I couldn't have directed it because it was all done so quickly and so spontaneously. I moved the camera, not him. I made a lot of mistakes, and I still do, but uh, I don't, uh, I try not to worry about it because I never will be the perfectionist, and I never tried to be, I guess, just so they didn't come out on must up. I don't think anyone knows his own work. We always make mistakes about what we like and what we don't like. One can never tell. I've done so many things that I've no idea how to evaluate them. I'm not a teacher, and I tell everybody that. 
I just am an arguer. I, I think that's the, the best way to put it. Uh, I think uh, some of the youngsters like me, but none of them agree with me. The characteristic uh, attitude now, uh, I think, in students is they just like very much what they are doing. And uh, if you tell them something that you think is strictly wrong, they will say, I wanted it that way. It amuses me. I like to let them do what they want to. I try to, not to influence them, but if I could say that I stimulated, that would be the best. Well, now you know, really and truly, people start out, uh, when they have worked two years, they think it's marvelous. When I tell them that I never thought of exhibiting until I'd been working about 10 years, you know, they're surprised. And uh, as a matter of fact, if I get the recognition that people think I have now, how long have I been doing it? Well, I've been exhibiting for nearly 70 years, I'd say. The only... Um, this last summer, the Smithsonian collected me. Well, I don't think there is a formula for a fine photograph where every person has a different idea about one. I always think the one, the finest photograph, from my way of thinking of what I do myself, is the one I'm going to do, not the one that I have done. So as soon as I've done it, it's finished. But I'm hoping someday to do a fine one. I think I have time. I'm quite a movie fan, of course. <laughs> In the cinema, you have the greatest opportunity possible for real expression, I think. The expressionist equality of it uh, it's true, and yet it's funny. I haven't been to a film for a long time. <laughs> Once in a while, you would like to go to a film. It might mean something, I don't know.